Hey guys, what's up? I'm Fair. I'm Unfair. Also known as Nick and Robbie. But you'll never figure out which one is which. That's not important. Not really. As long as you know that he's fair. And he's not fair. Um, so we decided that we're going to start playing uh, Mutate in Historic because that is, the Historic is going to be the thing that we're going to be playing mostly, uh, at least based on the poll on Twitter, which you can find down in the description below. And while you're down there finding our Twitter, go ahead and hit us with a subscription as well as a like because of the fact that that way you can help us out and help yourself out as well. And for all that have not looked at Historic yet, this format is just fire. It is way better than standard, way better than I ever anticipated. I'm actually super happy with it. If any of you guys ever played Modern back whenever it was a fairly new format, how innovative it was, that's kind of what Historic is nowadays, where you can kind of build whatever you want. You can find a card and be like, you know what, whatever. As a matter of fact, I think this guy can tell you the story of this deck. Okay, so this Mutate deck, uh, we were sitting there just trying to decide what we were going to play as our first deck, and I was like, you know what, Mutate would be funny, and then we just typed in Mutate in the search bar and clicked a bunch of cards that looked playable, and we have Soul Time Mutate. Yeah, and instead of going to Standard like you would expect to with uh, cards that are all in one set in Standard, we decided let's go ahead and play Historic, where people play Ulamogs and Lucas, and it's been surprisingly powerful. Oh my god, I made it to... God, I'm at diamond one or diamond two now with this deck. It's insane. Absolutely. But if you guys want to see the deck in the description below as well, feel free to check that out. Anyways, we're, let's get on to the game. So yeah, this hand's great. Uh, so the, one of the most important things with this deck is to have a one or two drop card that you can mutate onto. Um, Zagoth Mamba being a mutator and then having C Dash or Octopus as a possible mutator for turn two to both get the draw effect and possibly kill their turn one play is extremely powerful. It is unfortunate that Drown Catacomb's not a watery grave. Uh, I thought that was a watery grave. So, <laughs> <laughs> being able to play Zagoth Mamba on turn two, <laughs> a little less good. But it's still good. Um, you really you want to mulligan hands that don't have any combination of either Zagoth Mamba, Polywog Symbiote, or um, uh, Essence Symbiote. Symbiote. Have, uh, you want to have at least one of those three cards in your opening hand, otherwise it's just going to be too slow and you'll just get Bollywopped. The best part about Polywag is when it evolves or mutates or whatever, it becomes a Polywhirl. True. Um, and then you need a Kingstone in order to make it into a Polytoad, otherwise it becomes a, po uh, um, a Poly Wrath. And we don't really want to have the Wrath of the Polys on this. We don't have Water Stones anyway, so... True, true, true. I mean, would would, would, would mutating a, a Water-type Pokémon onto it make it... <laughs> uh, I mean, I guess that counts. What would be a King's Rock, though? Um, a King's Rock would be uh, mutating... I don't know. What, what's the... Oh, uh, King Caesar. Oh, there you go. Uh, too bad we're not playing that card. Uh, have we considered me yet? Uh, we tried. Or I, I was looking through different cards. Um, so we just attack here, right? Uh, I think so, and then I think we actually play the Gnar. Yeah, I agree, because of the fact that that would just be a really good um, card to start mutating onto. If they have some type of flash effect, then we can uh, flash the Death Octopus on. But having Gnar just uh, being able to be uh, mutated onto twice, giving us uh, nine power on board next turn, will be really, really great. Is that the Jeskai or the Teamer trial? Uh, that is the Jeskai. Are they in control? Jeskai control? Interesting. I, f I think I've only run into uh, Jeskai control once or twice. Huh. Well, I mean, like, I'm glad somebody's doing it, I guess. So, end of turn, we can just mute it. We can just flash in Batra. I think that's just. Er, Actually, C Dash Octopus might be a better card to flash in since they're if they don't play any creatures, because that way we can start getting card advantage by hitting them with us. So the one thing about Batra is that it also hits Planeswalkers. I would flash in the Octopus though. Yeah. Better to hold on to that in hand. We might do a little bit, a bit less damage. But I don't think they have anything in hand because they are uh, there's no like response time. Yeah. So, um, Glistener Recluse is also a really cool card to have uh, for because of the fact that any time you mutate, you get two encounters. And Reach is a, has been a surprisingly abil um, noticeable uh, ability. I think we don't want to go ahead and mutate the re Recluse onto the Zagoth Mamba, maybe? Or no, we, maybe we just play this. I think we just hold off, and like we can either flash in another Octopus or a Batra. That, that, that does make sense, actually. Well, I, can... I think when we have the ability to play the Flash game, we play the Flash game. I'm just afraid of a... Um... Of any type of board wipe. I guess it doesn't really matter either way. Well, like, if they board wipe, they wipe out three power, and then we have... I think we just 
Yeah, I think I, we flash this in, right? I don't think so. You don't think we flash it in? Uh, well, I guess the worst they could do is like spend two cards to kill two. If they have settled the wreckage, though, that would be the one thing that it would blow us out, right? Uh, settled the wreckage. Uh, I, I see flash in the octopus. Yeah. You gonna I think they're probably gonna. Oh, I would expect them to counter that there. Maybe they're just bad at playing counter math. Let's just attack with everything. If they have settled the wreckage, we're, we're, I mean, that's the one thing that that we're afraid of. Uh, there's no way to protect it. Yeah, we're, we're, we're fine with that. One thing to note about this deck is it is important to note that you do have the ability to flash in things to protect things, especially if you have an essence imbued. Um, I think we want to mutate the Migratory Great Horn onto the Zangoth Mamba to get the extra land drop so we can start doing more mutating next turn, right? I think that's fine. The extra power on board is really sweet, too. Also, whenever you mutate, uh, the card that's on top is what the card is. So now, even though we, this was a Zagoth Mamba, it is now a 4-drop, so it can no longer be hit by Glass Casket. That is actually a really important thing to note, because uh, things like Lava Brink Adventure as well, being able to give protection from either odd or even costs, can be mitigated by swapping things out. Man, Lava Brink Adventure? That's just a strange name for a white card. I just feel like it's supposed to be like red or something. Fair. I'm fair. <laughs> <laughs> what? All right, that's an interesting play. Um, we can just mutate the Batra onto something to kill I that. I think we do it onto the Great Horn, just in case they have an octopus to respond with, so they can blast the octopus. I think that's definitely the right. Card. Okay, I can, I can, I can, I can, I can see that play. And we also get another land drop out of that as well, which is sweet. Mutate there, kill the Vadrock, get a land, attack for five. And we're also out of lightning bolt range now. Okay, I mean, that's fine. We can still attack with the Great Horn um, safely. Wait, pro green? Oh, because he's, yeah, he's, he's, green, he, he's green now, yeah. Oh, wow. I would have made the mistake of saying uh, pro black. Uh, and I was just talking about that. Yeah. Oh, so we could play... No, it doesn't really do anything. I think we just play the land and pass, right? Yeah. I don't think you attack here. Yeah. Well, the fact that we have two other mutators that uh, whenever we use either of them, being able to get the Batra triggers is sweet as well. So the fact that he has four toughness being able to mitigate the Lightning Bolt, or uh, whatever the Lightning Bolt effect is, Lightning Strike, is also really cool. Is really good. Agreed. Ooh. So we're playing against Jeskai Mutate? That's... Ish? I mean, Jeskai Mutate Ish? I mean, they're going to Lightning Strike the Octopus. I think we're okay with that, though, right? I mean, we kind of have to be. Um, so my guess is that they have a Sea Dasher Octopus in their hand because they could um, instant speed mutate the Vagrock, which will give them counters and give them gods willing to protect the Vagrock. Well, I say we put a Glowstone in the Glowstone and find out. Yeah. And then we can also cycle. You know what would have been better? What? Uh, doing the parcel beast first. No, maybe not, because they could still call green. Oh, they just had a second God's Willing. Okay. Well, they have two cards in hand now. I think we actually want to cycle the Zega, uh, the Triome here, because um, if we get an Octopus, then we can mutate on here, kill that, and swing. Yeah. Yeah, let's do it. Uh, parcel Beast, it doesn't work though. I think we hold on to the Parcel Beast yeah. and we have an extra Mutator to attack with. Yeah, you're right. And we we don't have any effects that we can do any right now, so yeah, we just pass here. Did they top or bottom? Um, I believe they bottomed. The fact that uh, we can go Parcel Beast and then Dreamtail after they make it pro green will is sweet too, because Dreamtail Heron be turning it blue will change um, protection as well. You know, lightning strike us, probably. They're gonna run out of cards eventually. Unless they have two uh, mutators, in which they, case they can lightning strike our great one. No, they're just keeping on going with this. Only two cards in hand is sweet as well. Three cards now. Uh, <laughs> so we play this as a one of just for effects like this. Eat it, God's Willing. I don't really want to eat a God's Willing, though. It probably tastes like cardboard. Technically, the right play probably would have been to mutate the Dreamtail Heron onto it uh, first, because then we would get two draws instead of one. 
we no longer have any uh, use out of the Migratory Great Horn, but that's fine. Getting getting all four of our basics out of the deck. Wait. One, two. Three. Oh, there's our fourth one. Coming for eight. Wait, do we have do we have a lethal? Because uh, we have a glowstone recluse oh, on this. Oh, we do. Uh, one, one, two, two three. We're one land short. Parcel Beast does give us. No, we don't have any specific effects that would uh, help out. Yeah, I think we just attack for eight here. Yeah, it's fine. Maybe we play the Dreamtail Heron separately. Um, that way, if they maybe? have a kill spell, we can mutate on. We can have something else to start attacking with. Yeah, I can't imagine they play Shattered Main. Yeah, if they have any way to get rid of the Cheering Harvester, we still have a second threat, which I think is good enough. Um, one thing uh, will, will be we want to bring in. Interesting. So they're going to mutate, the, or they're going to bring back our Chittering Harvester, which is going to give us like five cards in him. Okay, but you can mutate on the Bachelor to kill the Teferi and then attack anyway. So you can play Woodland Cemetery, uh, play Bachelor. Okay. I mean, we had Lethal just by uh, mutating that onto the Dreamtail here and attacking. You're right. So we're playing against, uh, I guess, Je Jessica Control Mutate. So um, the fact that uh, Paradise Druid is able to give um, is able to be protected from any type of targeted removal is great. So I think that's going to be an auto include. Um, I think Cabin Whisper is a great addition, as uh, including Asterix or Asperix or Starix. Auspicious Starix. Asterix is fine. A Asterix. Asterix. And I actually think there's a possibility we bring in Shifting Ceratops too. Pro Blue is really powerful. That's fair. Uh, you just have to keep in mind you can't mutate a blue card onto it, which we only have. I can tell Heron and Parcel Beast and Z Dash or Octopus. Octopus is probably the most notable one, but yeah. Um, so Mamba is probably the easiest cut. Absolutely, they don't really have anything that we want to kill. And uh, dropping Mamba for Paradise Druid as separate mutators is an easy 4-4. Four four. Now we just need to drop four cards. I think the first thing we really want to drop is probably a Parcel Beast and a Migratory Greathorn. Probably. And then I like holding on to both Gem Razors because they're probably playing some type of Vanishing Light uh, targeted removal. Yeah, because, I mean, like, Lightning Strike doesn't take care of everything. True. I think that Chittering Harvester, although it, it did perform well that game, I think we, there's a good chance we drop that, right? God's Willing, though, is a card that we can play around. Uh, maybe a Symbiote? You think we drop a Symbiote here? Oh, they're both Symbiotes. I was right. <laughs> <laughs> um, hmm. So the, the thing about this deck is it's really hard to um, to sideboard with synergy-based decks. It's just like it's really hard to, um, to sideboard with things like um, robots because of the fact that anytime you take something out that has an effect that you care about, it also weakens the deck. Um, I think that Parcel Beast is, is our worst mutator, and since we dropped a couple of other cards, I think that's an easy th uh, maybe extra drop. A, maybe a Heron also. True, because they already have flying uh, creatures. I think that that's a good that's a good uh, a good in and out. Yeah, I think it's a good sixty. All right, let's see how it goes. One thing to keep in mind when we were playing these paradise heroes is that we could probably afford to cut a land because when you're making mana bases, you usually count your mana dorks as half a mana source. So boarding in four of those is like boarding in two lands. True, but I feel like we don't really use them as much as um, mana dorks. I think we keep this hand right by the way. So I think this hand's uh, okay. Oh, yeah, it's a sweet hand. We got um, Baby Godzilla, Baby Godzilla's Gas, Symbiote's a decent backup. Um, one thing to note about Symbiote, it's not going to be as important <clears throat> in this matchup, but it does stop uh, Heartless Act. Oh my god, it starts Heartless Act, that's amazing. I said that earlier, I know. But... <laughs> <laughs> Alright, well they're going to have to tab up next turn to deal with a threat if they uh, want to. Um... No, we're just going to... Oh wait, what? Uh, I, I goofed, I, I misclicked. I meant to change lands, but instead I just, uh... Bobby, no! God. Whatever, Bobby. Dang it, Bobby. Thank you. Trust me, uh, I have a plan. Uh, trumpeting Gnar, because they're going to bounce it regardless. Yeah, that's a good call. And then when they do bounce it, next turn we can go Baby Godzilla and Trumpeting Gnar, since uh, it, not, it not only does it give you uh, one less if it has Mutate, it's uh, not only for the Mutate cost, it's also for the regular spell. So with Baby Godzilla on the field, Trumpeting Gnar is only a 2 drop. 2 mana, 3-3. Three, three. Yeah, and we're fine with that. Wow, I didn't call that at all. Yeah, you didn't. I don't have its phone number. Oh, Lord. 
Dracus. So they are playing an interesting mutate style deck. But we can probably assume that they're not playing Shadow of the Sky. Yeah, if, if they are, then they're just probably not doing the right thing. So yeah, we got so, like a Baby Godzilla Trumpeting Gnar here. Yeah. Or even Symbiote. I think Trumpeting Gnar is a better call. Maybe? Uh, hard to say. Actually, uh, so... So this is a... This would be a three mana to activate, and this is four mana to uh, both of them to So mutate. you could also just play this as a... I think Gnar might be the best option. Yeah, get, getting getting more power on board by activating their abilities and getting the draw off of Baby Godzilla, I feel like it's just good enough. I don't know if you've got... Spin. I think we dropped the island here, right? No, the uh, breeding pool. Breeding pool. We already have two green sources. Like, the only way this would bite us in the ass if they were playing, like, Symbiote plus uh, Armored Killer or whatever next turn. What is that? Aguirius? Inguirius? Oh, Anger. Done the hero thing before. <laughs> oh, he, dude, he so he's considering angry. Harvester is great here. Because they have a God's Willing... Who cares? Exactly. And then we can attack the um, the Teferi lethal, lethally, easily. And, like, it sucks that Trumpeting Gnar died, but it was still only a 2-drop 3-3. Three, three. We didn't have any investment into other than that. So we can go Chittering, Chittering Harvester onto the Baby Godzilla. And if they do decide to kill Baby Godzilla in response, then we still get the Chittering, um, the Chittering Harvester without... Um... Oh, man, that's a great draw. Yeah, I think we dropped the Inguarius, right? Uh, do we drop that? Or, or we maybe the, the Symbiote? I think we dropped the um, Symbiote. Yeah, having more mut uh, having a critical mass of, of mutators is pretty powerful. And the fact that Sea Dasher Octopus also um, only costs one to mutate right now is also just really sweet. Thinking about playing the Gods? Oh, we can't flash it in, though. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to hit them with a nice right quick. I think they're doing it just to scry. They, they top, though, so, uh... Um, so they only have two cards left. I think we go ahead and mutate and then attack them. Or do you think we... I think we get rid of the Teferi now. Okay. And, and then have three we, cards left in hand? And then we can flash that in next turn if needed. True. If they play any creatures, we can just flash that in, in um, after it resolves, so that we can we, we can kill the creature to make sure that we have a um, an attacker. Just goes to show you, boys and girls, black green is the best combination to play possible. Another Lord Dracus. We're okay with them playing a three drop two three do nothing. It is unfortunately the opponents have missed a couple land drops. Yeah, we're gonna go ahead and flash in now, so that way they have to sacrifice. We're almost certainly going to drop this swamp, yeah. So yeah, that was um, that was Soul Time Mutate. It, it can be an extremely powerful deck. Uh, the fact that it has the ability to turn on a dime to go from being like a building up your deck, or building up your board state, and then swapping over to destroying their board state with things like Dirge Bat and uh, Chittering Harvester is really powerful. And then Gem Razor being able to blow up random enchantments and artifacts, like... It can deal with any problematic permanence, which is actually one of the reasons that um, that I'm a fan of the deck Taxes in Modern, because of the fact that it's able to deal with problem permanence you can't usually deal with in the game otherwise. And my testimony on this amazing deck is that I have climbed from Silver 2 to Diamond 2 in this deck, and it is just amazing. Like, my window loss ratio is insane. Yeah, so... If you are interested in seeing more of this deck, uh, when we do start streaming, we don't have a timeline on it yet, but go ahead and follow us, or, yeah, go ahead and follow us on, um... Twitter on at Twitter. fair underscore MTG. That's fair unfair games. Or, is it fair unfair MTG? It's, uh, for Twitter, it's just fair unfair MTG, um, with the MTG being capital, but you'll find us at fair underscore MTG. And then if you want to go ahead and follow our Twitch as well, so you can see this on stream when we start streaming, you can find us at Fair Unfair MTG. Uh, you'll know that it's us because we have the same symbol for our for our profile as on here. If anyone's curious as to where this uh, little crest or logo or whatever you want to call it came from, there's a very wonderful white card that costs four mana it is a uh, three and one white it is a two four vanilla beautiful card uh it is called pillar field locks this is the best card in the game i don't know if you guys have ever seen it but uh you should invest in it yep and the fact that our logo has two of them means that we're twice as good right that's fair man no it's unfair 
I've heard it both ways. But yeah, thank you for watching our video. Uh, if you wanted to go ahead and hit us with a quick subscription and like, it takes only a, qu a quarter of a second, and you can hit that bell icon as well, so that way you can find out when we post our next video. We're going to be trying to make it every single Wednesday. And until next time, have a great day.